will not hear the voice of reason the joy is echoing around me and all you'd done I thought was smile is this love is this love is this love floating to me in a dream is this love is this love flowing through me in a stream is this love is this love Absolutely beautiful this morning. I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was Javier back there. How you doing? Oh, welcome to Unity Center of Walnut Creek. My name is Linda Stevens, and it's my joy and honor to help out with the service this morning as your assistant up here. If you're experiencing unity for the first time, whether here in this room or online, we want you to know how glad we are to have you with us and that we consider you part of our spiritual community. And each Sunday we join in affirmative prayer and in just a minute we'll do some of those together and you'll find them inside your bulletin or behind me on the wall. But before we begin our service, I'd like to take just a moment to take anything that rings or chimes or makes a noise in any way and turn it completely off. That way it won't interfere with our folks at home. And speaking of our folks at home, if you're joining us today online, we want you to know how glad we are that you're here. Everybody wave, that's right. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Thank you for your presence. And we are very blessed today to have some special musicians with us. Everybody knows John Shin and Megan Diamond. And our very special guest today is Dada. Is it Dada or Dada? Dada. Dada, the singing muck. And there are CDs on the patio after the service, if that touches your heart. Now let's go inside to that very special place that only you and God know how to touch together. And we'll focus our attention through our opening affirmation. We'll say it three times, and each time let it go just a little deeper and deeper. Together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Take a breath. And again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And once again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Now as you stay in that very special place, please join me in reading aloud our statement of unity. Together, God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. 
we acknowledge the crystal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at depth. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. Now, Kathy Beddows, our heart minister, will read the daily word. Our lady word is protected. God is everywhere present. If I am seeking greater peace and security in my life, I remember that I am never separated from God, for God is within me. I hold to this thought in moments of stress or anxiety and know that I am not alone. The protecting presence shines on me, guides me, and fills me with peace. Through my awareness of the divine in me and around me, I move forward with confidence. There is no need to feel anxious or fearful, for I have a continuous light upon my path. Just as the light of each new day gives me a sense of peace and assurance that I am at all times divinely guided and protected. And the scripture reading is from Psalm 16:1. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. And the affirmation is, I am one with the protecting presence of God. And repeat with me the affirmation. I am I one am with the protecting, protecting presence, presence of God. God. Thank you. Please join us in singing Love is the Answer. As a community, there are so many things that we do here, classes that we have here, and things that make us a spiritual community. I'll bring some of them to your attention, and the other ones can be found in your bulletin or on our website. Our summer spiritual learning classes, the first session, starts on June the 6th. These classes have been skillfully and lovingly selected by your curriculum committee. So please consult your bulletin today for a list of them. And our spiritual growth team is excited to be hosting SEE. Some of you may have known it as another acronym in years past, but that's its new name, and it means our spiritual education enrichment. And it will be beginning on August the 14th for a whole week. It'll be during the daytime and in the evening, and this year they're going to do one item at a time, so you don't have to make all those choices you did before. So you can come to everything, and it's going to be absolutely wonderful, wonderful. So mark your calendars and set that time aside to be here with us. And our Spirit in Action group, that acronym is called, make sure I'm saying this right, S-I-A-N, is our new business networking group. And they follow the universal laws and it's kicking off its 2001 season with a business mixer on June the 5th. Come and share products and services that you offer, and more sign-ups will be out on the patio. And Susan, would you come to the lectern, please?
Good morning. Well, I'm excited because today is Participation Day. I want to start by sharing a quote with you that has been central to my life for many years now, and it goes like this. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I woke and saw that life is service. I acted, and behold, service is joy. All of the good things in my life, either directly or indirectly, have come to me as a result of initially volunteering for something. Stepping forward and offering myself has allowed me to make deep and rich friendships, to support with my whole self the things that I value, and to discover skills in myself that I didn't know I had. And so today, here at Unity, we have an opportunity for you to discover the joy and the richness of giving your whole self in service. Uh, We'll be meeting at 1 o'clock. We'll have food after this service in the community room and then regather here at 1 o'clock. And the heads of our teams, our committees, our staff will be sharing with you some of the opportunities for you to give yourself away here at Unity. And then we will also be asking you to, um, if you would particularly like to create a group or have a special interest, to come forward and see if there are others who would like to join you in making something happen. Doesn't mean you have to be the leader, you're just finding out if there's others who want to play the way you do. So join us to eat, join us to reconvene at one o'clock, And let's participate in a way that brings joy to all of us. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. You know, I'll bet you that 80% of the people here that are already involved started out by stepping up and saying, I would like to do something. Now, but if you're one of those people that needs to be asked, I'm asking you, in addition to Susan, to step forward, okay, because some of us need to be asked. So you are asked to please step forward and play with us and have fun. Now, especially if you're new here today. And so if you are new, I would like for you to take the courage to raise your hand, and we have a gift for you. So I'm not asking you to stand. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. Anybody here new for the first time? There's one person up here. That's wonderful. And, oh, back over here. Okay, Warren. Thank you for your, oh, it wasn't high enough. Oh, yay. Thank you. Oh, look at you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we have one more right here beside Bill. So as your greeters are giving you a shell lay, on this lay there's a little sheet of paper, and it says, just as God has a design for every shell in the ocean, So we believe God has a design with you for your life, okay? So we want you to know how much we appreciate you being here with us, and we'd like to give you a blessing. So you don't have to stand up. Just be willing to receive a blessing from about 100 folks. That may not happen many times in your life, so it is really, really special. So together, we love you, we bless you, and we behold the Christ light shining through you. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. And now it's your turn to tell your neighbors good morning. So stand up and say hello.
Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around Turn me around, oh no, turn me around Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking Watching on the freedom land Ain't gonna let my illusions turn me around Turn me around, oh no, turn me around Ain't gonna let my illusions turn me around I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking Marching on the freedom land Ain't gonna let my judgment turn me around No more, turn me around Ain't gonna let my judgment turn me around I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking Marching on the freedom land Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around Oh, no, turn me around, oh, turn me around Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking Marching on the freedom land All right, take that deep breath in through your heart. Breathe out and just release, open. Again, breathe in and breathe in that awareness of this divine love that surrounds you and folds you. As you breathe out, kind of wiggle around and get comfortable as we enter into our time of prayer and meditation together. Let the, let the music be that invitation to the very center of your heart. Father God, infinite love, beloved presence, thank you for awakening me. Thank you for making me aware that the touch of that warm, beautiful sunshine upon my skin this morning was your touch. For the fragrance that was carried in the breeze it was a fragrance of your life.
touching and blessing me. That the hand that touched mine was your hand. Expressing connection and love and care, blessing my life. Thank you that the sound the sound of the breeze through the trees those voices of people I love as I heard that vibration within my soul was your love touching me as The sound of the music this morning was the sound of you singing to me. Thank you that you are the sound and you are that in me which hears the sound. That you are the color You are the vision, you are the light, and you are that in me which sees the light, that glories in the colors, and you are that in me which feels the touch of a friend's hand, and you are that which touches me. And that you are that understanding unfolding in my being that there is only one. It is not you or I or them or that. It is just you. Just this divine love that we are one with. that nurtures and cares and guides and creates and that has given me this beautiful power to see and touch you in these sacred forms. Thank you that you are the peace that I feel. And you are that in me, which is at peace. And in this peace, I journey into silence, into that sacred place where the illusions of you and I fade away deeper than thought, deeper than feeling, into simply being being one, being here, being now. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know.
Mother, Father, God. Infinite love. Beloved presence. You who are this love that I find, this feeling and power and presence upon my heart. And this power of choice to send this love forth that it might heal and transform and guide and uplift. And so I radiate this presence, this power, this love, first to my own body for its wholeness and vitality. I send it to my mind and heart for wisdom and understanding. And I radiate it to each one dear to me. Blessing, uplifting, healing, guiding. I radiate this love across this spiritual community, becoming a part of that light and wisdom that flows through each one, blessing everyone in their world. I radiate your love across the communities in which we live, across our nation and the nations of the world, bringing about the healing of the fears of all people and calling forth their great wisdom and compassion. And I send your love to all who join us in prayer this day, whether in mosque, or synagogue, temple, or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides, for in seeking to know you, we are all one. And I send this love to the earth and to the creatures of the earth and to the heart of every single person. For you are that love in every heart, and in that love, We are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. This song was inspired by my mother. When I was about 12 years old, I asked her if she believed in God. And she said, I don't think it matters very much whether or not I believe in God, but I think it's very important that God believes in me. And this stuck in my mind for many, many years. Eventually, I wrote a song kind of about that. I thought, well, if God believes in me, what's he going to say to me? It might be something like this. (laughs) 
I want you to know that I'll always be your friend, for I know what it means to be alone. If you want, I can show that I really do intend to take care of this seed that I have sown. Love is everywhere, can you feel it? Love is everywhere. Love is everywhere. Love is everywhere Love is everywhere Can you feel it? Love is everywhere Love is everywhere Love is everywhere Everywhere Love is everywhere If you learn to see true The sunlight and the dew Will always appear as something new I am right before you But you are always looking this world where I'm hidden from your view Love is everywhere Can you feel it? Love is everywhere Love is everywhere Can you feel it? Love is everywhere Love Love is everywhere Love is everywhere Love is everywhere Everywhere Love is everywhere Love is everywhere Just acknowledging the moment. This is a Christ-centered church enjoying the music of a yogi while studying Taoism with some fine-tuning by heart math. God, I love unity. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, and... We know who you really are. So please turn to your neighbor and say, Good morning, you beautiful child of God. <laughs> and with great faith in divine abundance. I'm going to uh, offer a secret being in this room who was my college roommate, double whatever they may offer you for the stories from that part of our life. <laughs> Bob and Robin, would you, would you stand? These, these two beautiful beings have known me all way too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was, I was uh, doing a little reflecting on what we were playing with last, last Sunday. We, we 
for those of you that, that weren't a part of that experience, we began to explore one of the very, very challenging spiritual teachings of transformation uh, that comes uh, so beautifully expressed through Lao Tzu and the Tao Te Ching. And, and he talked about the experience of non-action. And that's a, that's a particular challenge for us Westerners. I mean, you know, we love Nike. Just do it. Okay. And uh, the basic teaching that he was giving us was, uh, don't just do something, sit there. Okay, so we're, we're, we're at that uh, point where sometimes that kind of challenges who we are. But the, but the understanding in Lao Tzu's teaching of, of non-action, where, uh, where he says, practice not doing, and everything will fall into place. Okay, this, this goes back to one of those core understandings from Jesus Seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things will be given unto you. In other words, he's inviting those of us who create our world so profoundly from our mental and emotional selves through activity to actually move into the spiritual part of the self and to use that spiritual power to transform what's within us. Because as we understand from spiritual law, what we are experiencing out here is us. That it is that which has been created and drawn into our lives through our thoughts, our feelings, our actions, our beliefs, and these, these express in the world around us. So his, his, Lao Tzu is really inviting us to, when we see that in the world, which we, we don't understand, we have difficulty dealing with, it becomes that challenge, or we aren't clear on how to deal with it, instead of going out there, to go in here, and connecting with that spiritual self, and bringing forth that transformation, until literally it flows out from us. He says, the master doesn't think about his actions, they flow from the core of his being. So this attunement, when, when we open and let this power and this intelligence flow in and it changes us in here. And that changes what's out there. And so we, we talked about, about that and it, it occurred to me, that's not very easy to do. <laughs> so, because I've worked with it a number of times in my life, not always successfully, uh, there's a part of me that just loves messing with the outer. So, there, so I'm, I'm aware there's some real, real challenges there, so I thought maybe it'd be helpful to bring one of the tools that really makes this work for me and, and share it with you. Because what happens is when, when we're doing that, we're saying, whoa, there's a situation in my life. Now, I'm assuming we're being theoretical here. <laughs> And none of you have situations in your lives that are uncomfortable or unclear what to do. I, mean, I know you're all clearly attuned and guided and it's all in harmony and flowing smoothly. So this is just theoretical. <laughs> but if there were something like that, how do we make that movement? And the, the answer to that to me begins when I'm really begin to understand, well, if I'm going to do that, if, if that's going to change in me, there's, there's going to be two things that are going to happen. One, I'm going to have to let go of something. Because if there's something showing up out here that's limited, there's something in me that's limited. And I'm going to have to let go of that limit in some way. And I'm going to have to open or a greater flow of that goodness, a greater experience of that intelligence to guide me, a greater power of wholeness flowing through me to experience it. The way that I find most helpful to embrace that change for myself is through the power of prayer. 
Because prayer is what guides me inwards. Prayer is what helps me make that connection. And one of the prayers that, that has been so meaningful to me in this journey has been, I release that which no longer serves me. I open to my highest good. Because just as I'm going to have to release, I have to open to. I release that which no longer serves me. I open to my highest good. Join me. I release that which no longer serves me. I open to my highest good. Again, I release that which no longer serves me. I open to my highest good. Feel that movement? Feel that? That that just takes a hold of that spiritual energy. It says, okay, I can let go. Yes, I can open. Once again, I release that which no longer serves me. I open to my highest good. Now, when we... When we take and we embrace something like the power prayer, what we're doing is we're essentially attuning to that spiritual self, to that divine presence that you're one with. But how much of it do we let in? How much do we want to let it impact and create? So what we're doing, it's, I think of it as just kind of turning that knob that tunes it in and says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it happen. So understanding that about the experience of prayer, I want to take a time out for just a moment. Okay, and I want to switch uh, modalities here for a moment. Uh, how many of you were with us yesterday at HeartMath? Okay, we, we had about 35 folks that uh, ended up at the Institute of HeartMath yesterday, and part of what we were doing there was taking some of the knowledge that they have developed through their research, okay, and in their, their research on what causes human transformation, they found that there are very specific feelings that we have and very specific feelings that cause the heart to change the entire body. And when we look at that change, one of the things that, that uh, when you look at it with, with spiritual knowledge about how we work, you realize it's like opening ourselves to a greater download, a greater connection with the spiritual presence and power that uh, is everywhere around us and expresses through us. Okay, so very specific feelings. And the one that they had us working with yesterday was the feeling of ease. The feeling of ease. Okay, now if, if we get to that connection with that divine presence and power, we attune more fully to it. Prayer is one of the ways we do that. And what are we doing when we pray? We're using, we're using our mind. We're using thought. Okay, and that, that has a feeling or an emotional component to it. So it, it's, it's thought with a, a feeling element in it. If you just focus on the feeling of ease, we're kind of skipping the thought and just going right into the feeling. But it is the feeling that brings us into the highest state of receptiveness. Okay, and one of the things that I understand about ease is that it is one of those core energies or vibrations of the soul. So when we touch that, it's a part of the things that happen for me in there is that it, it is that which we know when we are aware of the tremendous love and order that we are in. Then we feel in life. Ease. Okay, so it's a it's a it's a feeling that is at that core vibration of the soul, and so this this way of way of working is the same thing that we're doing through prayer, right? We're using mind and intention to move to something that brings us into attunement to that divine flow. Okay, and in the other, we're going to a feeling experience that brings us into attunement to that divine flow. So as, as we work here and as you touch with these different modalities, different, different ways of working, realizing they're, they're no, they aren't different. 
There may be uh, approaching from a different direction, but coming to the same place. Just like working with Lao Tzu's non-action is, is Jesus, seek, seek ye first that kingdom. In other words, move in, connect with spirit, seek ye first that kingdom, and all these things will be added. In other words, from that change of consciousness then flows uh, as we've opened to that higher goodness in our lives. Again, they're just different parts of the world, different cultures, same universal truth. Okay? So, then if we do this, oh, time back in. <laughs> okay. Using that prayer, what happens as we do that is we begin to open to guidance. We begin to go through a process of enlightenment because that's what happens when we open to spirit. That, that spiritual power brings enlightenment. It illumines Part the way forward. It illumines part of ourself that it's now time to transform. So let me share an experience with you. This is, this is from uh, Catherine Ponder's uh, work. She has a wonderful book. I think we gave it to everybody in here one Sunday. Um, the Prospering Power of Love. Wonderful teacher. And one of the things that Catherine Ponder was able to do is she traveled around the world and sent her, and her books were all over the world. People would write in to her and share their experiences. So this is the experience of a woman that wrote to uh, Catherine Ponder who dealt in this way with something that had come up in her life. Now the, the experience she reports is that she discovered a breast lump and it of course gave her, gave her concern. Now, what the woman does not talk about at all is to what extent she was engaged with the medical community in this experience. She's only talking about her internal experience. So she may have been fully engaged with the medical community. It may have come through uh, a, a physical examination, or it may be something where she had not yet engaged. We don't know this about the woman's story. So, but she's ex she shares her internal experience. Okay, and what she knew, in a sense, this, this same was that she had to move within to take care of her. That was the way that she was feeling was best. This, again, the same thing that we're looking at in the experience of non-action. Instead of moving out there, moving inside. Taking care of it first from that spiritual level. And so she would have embraced, she embraced the process of prayer, and my, my guess is it would have been very similar. She didn't give the specific prayer, but it would have been similar to what we were working with. I release that which no longer serves me. I open to my highest good. So from that process of prayer then, she began to think in a particular way about this physical problem. And what she was thinking was that this was a hardness within her body. Okay, this lump was a hardness within her body. And that, that, that meant to her that there must be a hardness within her thoughts and feelings somewhere. That somewhere she had in her, in her thoughts, in her feelings, in her attitude, a hardness that was then expressing in her body. So that was, that was the guidance that came to her as a result of her prayer. So she very sincerely then said, what would that be? You know, and took a look at her life. And you know, the, the truth was she was a very positive person who had um, good relationships. She was looking. She didn't, you know, wasn't carrying a bunch of anger to a bunch of folks or any, anything. Uh, her relationship with her, with her husband was very good. It was, you know, they were at the point of probably the happiest they'd ever been. And then she remembered five years before when he had had a relationship with another woman. And she had worked with that, they had worked with that, and they had moved to where they transformed that experience into what was now a, a very good, solid, uh, far better quality in their marriage. But when she looked back, she saw that there was still, that she had resentment, in other words, hard feelings 
towards that woman and towards him for the experience. So she then realized that it was important to her to dissolve those hard feelings, to transform the feelings. Again, this is the guidance that's coming from within her. As a result of praying, she began to look at her life in a different way. She began to understand that which in her which was important to release, that she might open to that which was greater. Okay. Now, I loved her. I love the way of prayer that she went about this, uh, this change within her. For the woman, this was her, was her prayer. I freely forgive you. I let you go. You have gone to meet your good. It is done. It is finished. Okay, and she, again, this prayer that she repeated. I freely forgive you. I let you go. You have gone to meet your good. It is done. It is finished. Then to her husband, she began to, to work with a, a prayer. I freely forgive you. I let go all false concepts about you. You are a faithful, loving husband, and we have a wonderful marriage. Only good has come from that experience. Okay, so let me read it again. I freely forgive you. I let go all false concepts about you. You are a faithful, loving husband. We have a wonderful marriage. Only good has come from that experience. So as she repeated these prayers, and she said she went over them consistently for several weeks. And what, what happens in the experience of, a, of the prayer of transformation, the prayer of releases? As we focus upon it and work with it, then the energy around the experience begins to change. And she found that when she went back into those memories that she was not finding the resentment, the anger there, that she was experiencing peace. And it was about that time that the lump within her breast disappeared. Okay. So here's, here's, here's a woman who had a situation, moved into doing the inner work, and she made that journey in by the power of prayer. And as she prayed, then guidance would come to her, and that would help her in her prayer. And again, prayer, the focusing and direction of spiritual energy, open to that greater wholeness entering into us, thus bringing about the change. Now, I've got to take another time out here. This is the lawyer part of myself. Okay, and I am protecting against metaphysical malpractice. Okay. <laughs> Because I need to explain to you that I shared this with you, not because it has any message in it about how to get rid of breast lumps. Okay, that was her experience. It may have had no association, whatever. We don't know. It may have simply opened her up for greater healing. Who knows what? Okay, the teaching that we're sharing is the power of prayer to move us into inner change. Okay, and I needed to share that because I know minds tend to do those things. They just want to associate things whether they're properly associated or not. So, time back in. <laughs> one, of the, one of the great beauties to me of what Lao Tzu and if you ever get the chance just to, just to read it, I find myself, I'll open it and just read, just read the, you know, their, their little paragraphs that uh, they just kind of change my consciousness somehow by just getting into the energy. This beautiful wisdom that he had on the presence and perfection of the divine in life itself and how we attune to that. And this wisdom to not, not take our problems by going out and taking control and just struggling with the outer all the time. But going to that place where transformation happens within ourselves. Letting that beautiful power 
and intelligence guide us to release that which no longer serves us and to open us for that highest good. I release that which no longer serves me. I open to my highest good. Together. I release that which no longer serves me. I open to my highest good. It's yours, and you deserve. Oh, if you'd like prayer support for Challengers of Celebrations, our heart ministers will be available after the service, and they're wearing the lovely lavender stoles. You're also invited to put a prayer request in our prayer box or out in the bookstore. Now it's time for our prosperity celebration, so I encourage you to take your tithes and your love offerings and affirm that God is the source of all of our good. Together, let's affirm our prosperity blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you. May the love we are sharing spread fly across the earth and bring you joy to every soul that is alive. May the blessings of your grace, my Lord, shine on everyone and may we all May the love you share spread its wings, fly across the earth, and bring you joy to every soul that is alive. May the blessings of your grace, my Lord, shine on everyone, and may we all see the light within, within. Fly across the earth and bring new joy to every soul that is alive. May the blessings of your grace, my Lord, shine on everyone. And may we all see the light within, within, within. Please join us.
<laughs> All right. Before we share our blessing, we, we want to focus a little blessing here. We have a special gift uh, with us in that Nathaniel Douglas has been willing to become a, a, a regional officer for our regional YOU. Nathaniel, thank you. We appreciate you. Let's bless our children together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. All right. And we receive these gifts, knowing that the true gift given here is that commitment on each of our hearts to touch this world in a way that brings forth its wholeness, its beauty, and its peace in the Christ joy. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and take hands and share together our prayer of protection. Come on. Come here. Grab back. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And our peace song. the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. Is this love? Is this love?